Hi, this is Kamal the Builder. Welcome to yet another one of our job sites. We have shot a video of a particular type of foundation before, and that's called a pier and grade beam foundation. That video is on our YouTube channel. Today we'll shoot a video on a different type of foundation. This is called a stem wall foundation or a raised foundation. And uh, you'll see various details that we cover as we go through describing various parts of the raised foundation. So a raised foundation, unlike a pier grade and grade beam foundation, doesn't have the piers that we typically dig for a pier and grade beam foundation. A raised foundation typically can have posts in the middle and you'll see where all the posts will be for this particular foundation. And most importantly, it has a wall all around the foundation. The wall of the foundation is typically raised, typically raised 18 inches off of the ground, uh, what they call the natural grade. Uh, and then in some cases we can raise it a bit more. So here we raised it about 24 inches from the ground and that gives you a crawl space. So this type of foundation has a crawl space always, whereas a pier and grade beam foundation also has a crawl space, but a slab foundation does not. Uh, we will certainly shoot a video uh, next time we pour a slab foundation. So here we are talking about a uh, stem wall foundation or a raised foundation and you'll see the walls all around and then we'll show you what's inside the foundation so you'll get a perspective we'll show you the posts that will go inside in the middle of the foundation we'll give you an idea of what happens there too so let's start describing uh, what the foundation looks like from the the walls of the exterior and then uh, as you'll see there's no concrete in there all this has to be inspected. Everything I'm going to show you has to be inspected and only then can we pour the concrete. So let's start to look inside the wood that is set up here. The wood is called forms. We basically set up forms on either side of the wall because the forms will hold the concrete once the concrete gets poured in. So let's start to look at that and you'll also see rebar, which is the steel that's in there. You'll see the little concrete blocks that we just pointed out. Uh, those concrete blocks raise the rebar off the ground. The rebar cannot be touching the bottom of the ground, so the concrete, little concrete blocks are used to raise the rebar. Uh, you also saw a few things called hold downs. Hold downs are specified by the structural engineer. In California, of course, we are in earthquake country, so all the structural details are very important. The structural engineer describes how many hold downs he or she wants, where should they be located and what type of hold downs they have to be. We commonly use HDU2s or HDU5s. We can provide more detail on those if you want. So this is how the exterior wall of the foundation looks like. Let's give you another perspective so you see how it goes all around the foundation. So it just goes on and on all around the foundation. The other thing that we do within the wall before concrete is poured is we put in what are called sleeves. Sleeves are typically uh, made out of ABS plastic. Think of it as an ABS pipe. And we keep those sleeves on so that the concrete gets poured and those sleeves basically act as conduits. So in the future when we make connections for plumbing, basically sewer connections and water connections, those connections are made through the sleeves so we don't have to make holes in the foundation because the sleeve's already there and it provides as a conduit. Here I will show you the sleeve for a future sewer connection. This is what it looks like. It's a four inch pipe because the sewer pipe itself will be three inches. So here's the sleeve as we put it in the foundation before concrete is poured. So you can see the uh, sleeve goes all through the foundation before concrete is poured. And after the concrete is poured, when we start doing plumbing, then we'll put in the sewer pipe through the sleeve. You'll find another sleeve that we will put in for the water pipe. The other thing to know at this stage is we also put in what's called a UFER connection. You'll see a piece of rebar sticking out. We paint it blue so it's easily identifiable. That's the UFO bar. Basically, uh, for those of you who are electrical engineers, this is a, think of it as a ground rod. 
it's electrically connected to the rest of the rebar that's in there and basically that's a ground connection that goes all around the foundation so when the electrical work starts the electrician uses that as the ground connection and ties basically the entire ground of the structure to the ufer this also gets inspected let's continue and show you the sleeve for the water pipe So here we are, we showed you a few things that are important for a raised foundation. We showed you how the forms are set up. We showed you rebar that's inside the foundation. We showed you sleeves where they go in. We showed you some concrete black blocks that are used to isolate the rebar from the bottom of the ground as well as from the sides of the forms. So the next step is for all this to get inspected and uh, then this will be uh, ready for concrete. The other thing I have not shown you yet and I might as well show you We'll show you where future posts will go. The structural engineer also decides where the posts have to go in the middle of the foundation. So we also dig holes for it. We put rebar for each of the posts. We have to dig hole of the right uh, dimensions of the right depth and then concrete gets poured in there and then, then the posts will get created. So let's show you where these posts will go in the foundation. So this particular foundation has six posts in the middle and uh, we've uh, uh, set them all up and they're ready to uh, accept concrete as soon as we start to pour concrete. So here we are. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for one of our videos. This is Kamal the Builder. Hi, this is Kamal the Builder once again. We've poured the uh, concrete for the foundation. Now we'll give you some perspectives uh, of what it looks like now. Before we start, let's rewind all the way to the design phase and talk about how all this gets started. So in a lot of projects, there's a soils engineer involved. The soils engineer comes and takes some soil samples and produces a report. The report tells us what type of foundation has to be designed, gives us specifics about depth of the foundation, if the piers have to be dug, the depth of the piers, if there are stem walls, the width and depth of the stem walls and the footings, and of course, the structure engineer and we have to meet a bunch of building codes. For example, locations of hold downs, locations of anchor bolts, how close they have to be to the hold downs, the size of anchor bolts. So a bunch of these things are spe specified in the building codes that we have to meet. And often enough, there is a table in the plans that has the locations and types of anchor bolts and hold downs and so on. So when the building inspector comes for inspections before the concrete is poured, they verify that we have met all those requirements and we have hold downs and anchor bolts in the right places of the right type in the right quantity. And only then are we allowed to proceed and pour the concrete. So with all those details, uh, we'll start to show you what the foundation looks like. As you know, uh, this is a raised foundation uh, Typically, these are 18 inches high uh, from the ground. Uh, sometimes we make them 24 inches high. So let's talk about why uh, that's a benefit to our customer and why we do certain things. For example, uh, in a certain project, if we are allowed to have a raised foundation like this one, the advantage it gives us is there's a crawl space. So in case plumbing ever breaks, in case the customer has to run, you know, low voltage wiring or change electrical wiring or add an outlet somewhere, electrical outlet somewhere, the customer has a place in the crawl space to go and make those changes. If you don't have a crawl space foundation, let's say you have a slab foundation and the plumbing under the foundation breaks, now you have to make a hole in the floor, uh, create a trench sometimes, just to do that repair work and it gets expensive now with with the current materials we're using uh, you know abs for sewer pipes and so on these things are not expected to happen for another 10 to 20 years but just in case it happens the repair work in a slab foundation is a bit more expensive the other advantage a slab foundation gives you is height uh, 
Of the utility connections we have, sewer, water, electricity, and gas in some projects, sewer is the only utility that needs slope, that needs gravity, that flows with gravity and needs a slope. So a raised foundation allows us to have that slope. Typically, we require to have two degree or three degree of slope in the sewer pipe, and the raised foundation allows us to have that. Typically, in a slab foundation, that's not a possibility. So again, all these details vary according to the type of soil in the project, according to the type of project, and according to the structural design. Contact us for more details, and then we'll take you around the poured foundation and you see what the foundation looks like after concrete has been poured. And we'll also show you the sleeves that we talked about in the previous video, the sleeves for water connections and sewer connections. And we'll also show you the posts in the middle of the foundation. This particular project required us to have six posts in the middle. So we'll show you those posts as well. Let's show you one of the sleeves first. This is where our sewer connection will go in the future. As you can see, the sleeve goes through the foundation and allows us to have the sewer pipe through the foundation in the future when we put it in. Here are the six posts we talked about. So here we are, we've completed all the foundation work and now we are ready to basically have sill plates on the foundation. We'll talk about that when we do the framing. We'll end up having sill plates made with pressure treated wood. On top of that, we'll use Douglas fir to do the rest of the framing. We'll have vents for the foundation. Uh, all those are calculated, those are all in the plans. And then we'll proceed with framing and shoot some more video. So here we are. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for one of our videos. This is Kamal the Builder. Remember to subscribe to our channel and also ring the bell so that you can be notified of future videos as we post them. Feel free to reach out to us for any consultations. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye-bye.